Well, Thomas Beckett, are you satisfied? Here I am, stripped, kneeling at your tomb, while those treacherous Saxon monks of yours are getting ready to thrash me. Me, with my delicate skin. I bet you'd never have done the same for me. But I suppose I have to do this penance and make my peace with you. What a strange end to our story. How cold it was when we last met on the shores of France. Funny, it's nearly always been cold. Except at the beginning, when we were friends. We did have a few fine summer evenings with the girls. Did you love Gwendolyn, Archbishop? Did you hate me the night I took her from you? Shouting, I am the king. Perhaps that's what you could never forgive me for. Look at them lurking there, gloating. Oh, Thomas, I'm ashamed of this whole silly masquerade. All right, so I've come here to make my peace with their Saxon hero because I need them now those Saxon peasants of yours. Now I'll call them my sons, as you wanted me to. You taught me that, too. You taught me everything. Those were the happy times. You remember? At the peep of dawn, when, as usual, we'd been drinking and wenching in the town. You were even better at that than I was. Get down up there. Quick, out through the window. 
Thank you. Rub harder, pig. I'm cold. Ah, no one does it the way you do, Thomas. Thank you. I think you actually like the cold. I made you a nobleman. Why do you play at being my valet? I'm your servant, in the council chamber or here in the bath. My Norman barons resent it. They feel it's your Saxon way of mocking their nobility. Nobility lies in the man, my prince, not in the towel. Have you any idea how much trouble I took to make you noble? I think so. I recall you pointed a finger and said, Thomas Beckett, you are noble. The Queen and your mother became very agitated. <laughs> They're always agitated. No, I'm in trouble from the barons. They hate you, you know. Of course, one always hates what one wrongs. When you Normans invaded England, you seized our Saxon land, burned our Saxon homes, raped our Saxon sisters. Naturally, you hate Saxons. Don't include me. It was my great-grandfather, William, who was called the Conqueror. I'm an old resident. I did not mean you, didn't you? You know, when I took you into my service, everyone predicted you'd put a knife in my back. Did you believe them? No. I assured them that you were a man of honor and a collaborator. That was accurate of you. How do you combine the two? My lord? Honor and collaboration. I don't try. I love good living, and good living is Norman. I love life, and the Saxon's only birthright is to be slaughtered. One collaborates to live. And honor? Honor is a concern of the living. One can't very well be concerned about it once one's dead. You're too clever for me, Thomas. But I know there's something not quite right about your reasoning. Honor is a private matter with him. It's an idea, and every man has his own version of it. How gracefully you tell your king to mind his own business. Time for the council meeting, my lord. Uh. Will my lord dine with me tonight? On gold plate? Always. I'm your king, and I eat off silver. Your expenses are heavy. I've only my pleasure to pay for. Tonight you can do me the honor of christening my forks. Forks? Yes, from Florence. New little invention. It's for pronging meat and carrying it to the mouth. It saves you dirtying your fingers. But then you dirty the fork. Yes, but it's washable. So are your fingers. I don't see the point. Well, it hasn't any, practically speaking, but it's refined. It's subtle. It's very unknown. Right. You must order me some. For my barons. I have enough forks to go around. Bring the gentlemen with you tonight. I shall. We won't tell them what they're for. 
They probably think they're a new kind of dagger. <laughs> Gentlemen, I've called you here to find out why a simple request for taxes causes such unpriestly caterwauling. My lord. We must come to an understanding about who rules this kingdom. The church? My lord, I wish to ask... Just a moment, Archbishop. The church or me? There are many troublesome issues between us which call for a reckoning. Amongst other abuses is the claim you make of judging your clergy accused of civil crimes in your own ecclesiastical courts. I warn you, there can be only one justice in this country, and that is the king's. But before we quarrel, here is some happy news. I have decided to revive the office of Chancellor of England, Keeper of the Lion's Seal, and entrust it to our loyal servant, Thomas Beckett. Yes, my little Saxon. My lord. Well, for once, I've taken you by surprise. My lord, this is a stupendous honor for which I may not be worthy. I'm uh, inexperienced in these matters and frivolous by nature. Rubbish. You know more than all of us put together. He's read books, you know. It's amazing. He's drunk and wenched his way through London, but he's thinking all the time, aren't you, Thomas? He'll checkmate the lot of you. Even your archbishop. I never did anything without your advice. No one knew it. Now everyone will. That's all. There. That's the great seal of England. Don't lose it. Without the seal, there's no more England. And we'll all have to pack up and go back to Normandy. May I crave leave to greet our young and learned friend? For I noticed him when he was first made archdeacon. Thank you, Archbishop. But don't rely too much on Beckett to play your game. He's my man. I'd forgotten you were an archdeacon, Thomas. So had I, my prince. Now to business. The law demands that every landowner send soldiers to give me service or pay a tax in silver. Is that correct? I have heard so, my lord. We are about to cross the channel to force Louis of France to return the Norman towns he has taken from us. I have received neither soldiers nor silver from you gentlemen for this war. But surely one must distinguish between the individual landowner and God's church. The law doesn't distinguish. But this has never been spoken of before. I've never been this poor before. Now I've made up my mind and I'm passing round the plate. Just drop in the money. Ooh, my backside's sore. They're all. Count your blessings, sire. <clears throat> Don't know about you, Thomas, but I'm starving. Have them bring us something to eat. The layman who shirks his duty and fails to supply his king with arms should pay the tax. Nobody will question that. <laughs> Least of all the clergy. On the other hand, a priest's duty is to assist his king with his prayers for godliness and peace. He cannot maintain men at arms without violating the very essence of that sacred function. Therefore, he cannot be held liable for the tax. Your priests fought well enough in the days of the conquest when there was booty to be had. Sword in fist, ropes in the saddle, death to the Saxon scum, it's God's will, it's God's will. Those violent days are over. The priest is back in his sanctuary. It is peace time now. But not for long. Pay up. I don't intend to budge. Come on, Chancellor, say something. Has your new title made you tongue-tied? May I respectfully draw to my Lord Archbishop's attention one small point? Respectfully, but firmly. Your Chancellor now. England is a ship. The King is the captain of the ship. That's neat. I like that. My Lord Chancellor, in point of fact, there is also a saying, the captain is sole master after God. After God!
Nobody's questioning God's authority, Archbishop. Well, certainly God protects the ship by inspiring the captain, but I've never heard that he determines the wages of the crew nor instructs the paymaster in his duties. God has more important business. Our young deacon's ambition has carried him away from the church, but he cannot have forgotten that what is important is revealed to man only through his church in the person of our Holy Father in Rome, his bishops and his priests. Or does the Chancellor think otherwise? True, there is a priest on board every ship. He gives God's blessings. But neither God nor the church ask him to take the wheel from the helmsman. My Reverend Lord, the Bishop of London, who I understand is the son of a sailor, surely cannot have forgotten that. <laughs> I will not allow personal insinuation to compromise the integrity and honor of the church. Please, Bishop, no long words. All that's at stake here is its money. I need money to fight the French. Will the church give it to me? Yes or no? My lord, your illustrious ancestor, William the Conqueror, granted these tax exemptions to the church. May he rest in peace where he is now. He doesn't need money. I'm still on earth, and I do. This is not primarily a question of money, Your Highness. This is a question of principle. I need troops, Bishop! I've sent for 3,000 Swiss to help me fight the King of France. And no one has ever paid the Swiss with principles. My Lord Chancellor, it is pointless to continue this discussion. The law has given us the means of coercion. We will use it. You! You owe everything to Holy Mother Church. Would you dare plunge a dagger into her bosom? My lord and king, who rules by the grace of God, has given me his seal with the three lions to protect. My mother is England now. Traitor! Saxon! My reverend friend, I strongly suggest that you respect my chancellor, or else I'll call my guard. Ah, here they are now. Oh, no. It's only my snack. Now, gentlemen, if you will excuse me. At this hour in the morning, I need sustenance, or else I tend to feel weak. And a king must never weaken. I'm sure you will agree. I'll have it in my chapel. Then I can pray directly afterwards. Come on, Thomas, keep me company. He means it's time for the hunt. Not until we have eaten, my dear Bishop. the Baron. Oh, they'll find us. Here, hold this. Ooh. Oh, I'm cold. I'm pretty. Go sit on there. Has a good girl. Go on, get on there. Ooh. I'm freezing. Get the fire going. Oh, there'll be no wood in this house. In the middle of the forest? These people are entitled to two measures of dead wood a year, one branch more, and they hang. 
My edict? Your edict. <laughs> <laughs> Come here, old man. We need firewood. Don't be afraid. Thomas! Thomas, come here. Look at this. She stinks a bit, but we could wash her. What would you think of it? Cleaned up a little. She's a child. What would you like when it's a woman? How old would you say it was? 16, 17? You can speak, my lord. How old are you? Eh? Of course he can speak. How old's your daughter, dog? Odd the number of dumb people I meet when I set foot out of my palace. I rule over a kingdom of mutes. They're afraid. Quite right, too. Don't stand there. Put the wood on the fire. Hello, pretty. The odd thing is, it's so ugly that it makes such pretty daughters. You're a member of the family. Explain that. Well, at 20, before he lost his teeth and took on that ageless look the common people have, he may have been handsome. He may have had one night of love, one moment when he was a king and shed his fear. Afterwards, his pauper's life went on eternally the same. The moment faded, and he forgot it all. The seed was sown. Will she go ugly, too? Surely. If we made her a whore and kept her at the palace, would, would she stay pretty? Perhaps. Then we'd be doing her a service, wouldn't we? No doubt. Ooh. Look at it. It understands every word. Stop staring at me, dog! Get me something to drink. I have some drink in my saddle. What's the matter, Thomas? Nothing. I'm getting you a drink. Thank you, Thomas. Our escort. Want some? What's the matter? You hurt? It's nothing. Show me. Now, you know you can't stand the sight of blood. My horse bit me. <laughs> That's too funny. My lord here makes us all look silly at the jobs with his fancy horsemanship. He goes to his saddlebags and gets bitten like a groom. You look quite shaken, little Saxon. It's funny, I can't bear to think of you in pain. All this, just to get me a drink. Wounded in the service of the king. This deserves a gift. What would you like? Girl. I fancy her. It's very tiresome of you. I fancy her myself. And where that subject's concerned, friendship goes by the board. All right. She's yours. Thank you, my prince. But you will return the favor equally one day. At your pleasure. Equally. Favor for favor. You give me your word as a gentleman? I do. Right. She's yours. Shall we take her with us, or shall we have her sent? No, no, no. The uh, soldiers can bring her. Wash your daughter, dog, and kill her fleas. She's coming to the palace. 
for my lordship here. He's a Saxon too, so I hope you'll be pleased. Give him money, Thomas. I'm feeling generous this morning. Don't worry about your daughter. Nobody will come to take her away. I'll see to that. And tell your son he should stay hidden in the forest until he can handle the night better. Here. Fighting, my dear Baron, or eating. Noisy brutes. You seem to spend a great deal of time in their company. No, I can forget it when I come to you. I'm happy that I can relieve you. Now, don't tease me tonight, Gwendolyn. I'm off to France again tomorrow. And war. I am my lord's captive. Whatever his purpose and whatever his mood. I hope so. It is God's will, since he gave the Normans victory over my people. And that's the only reason you're here. If the Welsh had won the war, I would have married a man of my own race at my father's castle. God did not will it so. All right. I'm sorry I was so late coming to you. But the king is demanding. And the barons have to be kept at bay. I'm lying. You are my lord, God or no God. If we had won the war, you could just as easily have taken me from my father's castle. I would have come with you, for you had taken my heart before you captured my body. Have I said something wrong? Somehow I can never support the idea of being loved. I told you that. <laughs> oh, please. Sit. Uh, play something. Something sad. It helps the digestion. Sit, Thomas. Witness one of my finer moments. I behave like a brute, but I'm as soft as swans down inside. 
You know, Thomas, sometimes I think that you and I are the only civilized men in England. I eat with a fork. And you've made me into a man of the most delicate sensibilities. Now, if you really love me, you should find me a beautiful, well-bred girl. Give me a little polish. Favor for favor. Do you remember? I am your servant, my lord. All that I have is yours. But you are also gracious enough to say, I am your friend. Yes, that's what I mean. As one friend to another. You do care for her, then. You do care about something. Or do you? Go on, tell me. Tell me if you care for her or not. I said favor for favor, and I asked for your word. And I gave it to you. Right. Well, that's settled then. May I have a moment's grace? Surely, surely. After all, I'm not a savage. Did you promise me to him? No. I promised him anything he asked for. I never thought it would be you. If he sends me away tomorrow, will you take me back? No. I leave you this. You've almost learned to play it. You've not found anything in the whole world to care for, have you? No. We both belong to a conquered race. But you've forgotten that people robbed of everything can still have one thing left to call their own. Yes. Where honor should be, in me there is only a void. I loved you, Thomas Beckett. You are, Thomas. You'd forgotten her. But you told me that you fancied her, and I remembered. You see, I really am your friend, and you're wrong not to love me. Good night, sir. Shall I undress, my lord? Huh? Shall I undress?
Thomas. She's dead. She's killed herself. There's blood. Help me, Thomas. I'm frightened. I'm the king! Get rid of her! Dad. I'm sleeping here tonight. Give a silver piece and let her go. It won't hurt you. I don't want to be alone tonight. I'm here, my prince. You'll hate me now. And uh, I'll never be able to trust you. You have nothing to fear. You gave me your seal. And while I wear it, my duty is to my king. But I'll never know what you're thinking. See? Sleep now. We cross the channel tomorrow. When we face the French on the field of battle, there will be simple answers to everything. So long as Beckett must improvise his honor from day to day, he will serve you faithfully. One day he should meet his honor in truth, face to face. But where is Beckett's honor? Good morning to you, gentlemen. I've just ridden from the town. I've arranged for its capitulation. Well, will there be loot? No, I want these people to collaborate with good grace. The French bishop will deliver the keys of the city to the king at eight o'clock in the cathedral. No fighting? What are we here for? To secure King Henry's possessions in France. You have three more towns to recapture. I'd rather sack the town and slaughter the lot. Yes, and have a dead city. Now I want to give the king living cities to increase his wealth. From dawn this morning, I'm the townspeople's dearest friend. And what of England's pride? England's pride, my dear Baron, is to succeed. What a mentality. <laughs> Chancellor of England. Who knows what he is? He's a Saxon.
finish him. Leave us, Sergeant. My lord. Leave us. What are you, a Saxon monk, doing in France? They'll kill you, you know. I'm prepared to die. How old are you? Eighteen. Mm. Dying is easy at eighteen. Your knife stinks of onions like every proper little Saxon's knife. You used to be a Saxon. Now you belong to the Normans. Ah, I see. A Saxon knife for a Saxon collaborator. Did you think that by killing me you could liberate your race? No, not my race. Myself. From what? My shame. And yours. The Normans have occupied England for a hundred years since Hastings. Shame is an old vintage to the Saxon. Your father and your grandfather drank it to the dregs. The cup is empty now. No, never. What's your name? What is your name? John. Sergeant! Well, Brother John, I'm going to save your life. It has no importance for me, but it's very rare for fate to bring one face to face with one's own ghost when young. My lord? Have this monk returned to England to the custody of the abbot of his monastery. I want him treated without brutality, but carefully watched. Yes, my lord. My lord? Good morning, my lord. Oh, French wine. I had a little too much last night. It's their major contribution to civilization. Uh -huh. Here's another. <laughs> I must say I adore my French possessions. They're certainly worth recapturing. What's your name, my pretty? Name? Marie. Marie. Very French. French luxury is very... Luxurious. And for the moment, free. We take possession of the town this morning. Yes, I heard. You managed that very well, Thomas. Well, personally, I shall miss the fighting. Meanwhile, we have some business to discuss. I've been studying the dispatches from England. You love work, don't you? If you love anything. I love doing what I have to do and doing it well. You'd be as efficient against me as for me, wouldn't you? If fate had arranged it that way. So what in most people is morality, in you it's just an exercise in... What's the word? Aesthetics. Yes, that's the word. Always aesthetics. Yes. Well, now. Look at that. Isn't that aesthetic too? Some people go into ecstasies over cathedrals, but that's a work of art. Look at it, round as an apple. Want her? Business, my lord. All right, business. Sit down. Listen carefully, Marie, to the droppings of the greatest brain of our day. <laughs> now, piecing together all the information I've received from London, there are some unpleasant deductions to be made. The power of the bishops is increasing like the pestilence. Soon it will rival your own. Talk sense, Thomas. Priests are always intriguing, but I can crush them any time I wish. If you don't crush them now, in five years' time there will be two kings of England, the Archbishop of Canterbury and you. In ten years' time there will be only one. It won't be me. I fear not. And to horse, Thomas! To horse! War on the clergy! Death to the Archbishop! My lord! I can't breathe! What are you doing down there? Spying for the clergy. Be off with you. Put on your clothes and go home. My lord, am I to come back to the camp tonight? Yes. No. I don't know. I'm thinking of priests now, not you. Go away. Wait. I'm going to be sure of getting another one as good. Yes, come back tonight. You're adorable. <laughs> you must always tell them that. 
even when you pay. That's high politics, too. Only one. It won't be me. It won't be you. But what will God say if I attack his church? After all, they're his bishops. We must manage the church. One can always come to a sensible little arrangement with God. <laughs> Beckett, you're a monster. <laughs> you flatter me, my lord. But please, my lord, dress quickly. It's, uh, it's inelegant for conquerors to be late. <laughs> you're a monster! <laughs> dearly, these French. <laughs> so they should. We pay them enough. In that case, we should have found some that didn't dress out of a rag barrel. Look. The rich are at home, sulking. Supporters of King Louis of France? No, it just would have cost too much. That sounds real. Yes, we have soldiers disguised in the crowd to encourage enthusiasm. Why must you destroy all my illusions? Because you should have none, my friend. What do you see? Reality. Stop here! The bishop is waiting. As if it mattered what I do with a bishop whose city I've just taken. It matters. Am I the strongest or am I not? You are today. But one must never drive one's enemy to despair. It makes him strong. Gentleness is better politics. It saps virility. A good occupational force must never crush. It must corrupt. Make a note of the house. Oh, never mind! My lord, the bishop. Yes, papa. No, papa. William of Colbert. Yes, sir. I hardly recognized you without a tankard covering your face. How did they pry you away from it? I had urgent messages from London for you, my lord. It seems that God is on our side after all, Thomas. What is that, my prince? He's just recalled the Archbishop of Canterbury to his bosom. That frail old man. He was the first Norman to take an interest in me. God rest his soul. He will. He will. And he'll be much more used to God than he ever was to me. Thomas? Extraordinary idea is creeping into my mind. A masterstroke. I'm suddenly very intelligent. Probably comes from making love to that French girl last night. I'm subtle. I'm even profound. Oh, I'm so profound, it's making my head spin. <laughs> Are you listening to me, Thomas? I'm listening, my prince. We need a new Archbishop of Canterbury. I think there is a man we can rely on. No matter who it is, once the Archbishop's mitre is on his head, he will no longer be on your side. But if the Archbishop is my man, if Canterbury is for the king, how could his power possibly get in my way? But my lord, we know your bishops. Once enthroned at Canterbury, every one of them would grow dizzy with power. 
Not this man. This is someone who doesn't know what dizziness means. Someone who isn't afraid of God. I'm sorry to deprive you of the French girls and the other spoils of victory. But are you listening to me, Thomas? Hmm? You're leaving for England tonight. On what mission, my prince? You are going to deliver a letter to all the bishops of England. Mm -hmm. My royal edict nominating you, Thomas Beckett, primate of England, Archbishop of Canterbury. <laughs> Shut up. Thomas, I'm in deadly earnest. My lord, don't do this. You have an odd way of taking good news. I should think it would be triumphant. But I... I'm not even a priest. You're a deacon. You can be ordained priest and consecrated archbishop the next day. Have you considered what the Pope would say? I'll pay his price. My lord. This frightens me. I thought you had God in the palm of your hand, Thomas. I beg of you. Do not do this. You've never disappointed me, Thomas. And you're the only man I can trust. You leave for England tonight. Beckett? Thank you for returning to us the keys of our city. The die is cast, Thomas. Make the most of it. And if I know you, I'm sure you will. Thank you, my lord. You're welcome. It will keep you warm. He'll only sell it for drink. Then that will keep him warm. Yes, your grace. No, not your grace. I will not be consecrated archbishop until tomorrow. I'm sorry. Father. That is temporarily correct. You don't really intend to give away your winter cloaks. Everything. Has all the gold plate been sold? Yes, the money from the sales is in those places. Excellent. Bring me the rest of the money. But your grace, sir, I mean father. Everything. Welcome to Canterbury, my Lord Bishop. Is anything wrong? May I ask what is happening here? Go sell all that thou hast and give it to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven. I doubt if the Lord Jesus meant that to apply to a chancellor about to be consecrated archbishop. Perhaps then it's a touch of vanity. A truly saintly man I know would never do all this in one day. Let us call it the clumsy gesture of a spiritual gatecrasher. Most clever. An archbishop who gives all so dramatically to the people would be most popular with them. Oh, no, Folliot. I'm simply enjoying all this. I'm beginning to believe he's not a sad god after all. Forgive me, I fear my inexperienced methods will never meet with your approval. I know that you cast the only vote against me. In the end, I gave way to the king's wishes. I don't blame your reluctance. 
as Bishop of London and senior churchman, you should have been Archbishop. Now, to have to consecrate me instead and place the mitre on my head... I have no choice. I'm only performing my function as Bishop. I see you still wear the seal of the King's Chancellor. Yes, I will continue to wear it. That and the Archbishop's ring. You do not find this inconsistent? No. God is best, sir, when the two rest side by side in harmony. These excessive acts of humility will not compensate for subservience to the crown. Thank you. We are both aware of the delicacy of my position. Let us trust that God will find a solution for it. And now, since humility seems to be a little hard on the knees, I trust you will be comfortable under our roof, my Lord Bishop. Dear Lord, I wish there was something I really regretted parting with so that I might offer it to you. But forgive me, Lord, it's like going on a holiday. I've never enjoyed myself so much in my whole life. Lord, are you sure you're not laughing at me? It all seems far too easy. It is a bishop's duty to pass judgment, to interpret, to consecrate, to ordain, to offer sacrifice, to baptize, and to confirm. Let us pray, beloved brethren, that the goodness of Almighty God, providing for the well-being of his church, may bestow upon this bishop-elect the abundance of his grace through Christ our Lord. May these hands be anointed with hallowed oil with the chrism that sanctifies, even as Samuel anointed David, king and prophet. So may these hands be anointed and consecrated. Take this ring token of the pledged word. Yours it is, dowered with unshakable fidelity, to preserve and guard, in unblemished honor, God's bride, Holy Church. of this bishop and champion of thine, I put the helmet of defense and salvation, that with forehead thus adorned, head armed with the horns of both testaments, he may appear fearsome to the enemies of truth.
Sit nomen Domini Benedictum. Adjutorium nostrum in nomine Domini. Benedicat vos omnipotens Deus. Pater et filius et spiritus sanctus. Amen. will receive you here. It isn't every day that a Saxon monk has an audience with an archbishop. Open your eyes. You'll kiss his ring and show respect for his grace or you'll get my foot on your backside. You're welcome to Canterbury. Kneel to his grace. I see our young brother is quite unchanged. Has he been troublesome to his abbot? Stubborn as a mule, my lord. Father Abbot tried kindness, but in the end had to have recourse to bread and water and even to the whip. Nothing has any effect. Except for a good kick in the rump, if your grace will pardon the expression. Stand up straight. Pay attention to your brother. As a rule, the sin of pride stiffens a man's back. Look me in the face. Look me in the face. Well? What do you have to say for yourself? I see. Now, brothers, we relieve you for today from your rule of abstinence. Go to our kitchen before you depart, and I hope you do justice to our cuisine. And this one? We will keep him here with us. He's vicious, Your Grace. We are not afraid. Well, now. Wouldn't you rather have a Saxon archbishop than a Norman one? I hope I won't regret sending for you. Why did you? I'm not sure. Perhaps in a young, intemperate way, yours is a voice that is good for me to hear. And why? But please, not too often and not too loud, Brother John. You betrayed your Saxon race. Now you betray God. Perhaps you will succeed in teaching me humility. It's a virtue I've never really mastered. Enter. Your Grace, Bishop Foliot has just arrived from London. He wishes to speak to you urgently. Well, my Lord Bishop, what is it? But Your Grace, you may speak freely. Brother John is in our confidence. What is it? Your Grace, I have a most serious matter to report, which requires your immediate intervention. Proceed. A parish priest in Lord Gilbert's domain, who was accused of debauching a young girl, has been seized by his lordship's soldiers and dragged before the civil courts. Is the priest guilty? That is immaterial. As a consecrated minister of God, he can only be tried by our ecclesiastical courts. We must demand his release into church custody immediately. The principle is a vital one. Does the king know of this? He knows, but he turns a deaf ear. Lord Gilbert is his friend. I am also a friend of King Henry's. As Chancellor, you are his friend. 
But I wear the mitre now. You also wear the great seal of England, and I warned you, you could never do so honorably. It is fortunate that I do. I will plead our case to the king. I did not come here to ask you to plead a case. I'm asking you to defend a principle, and you'd better do so quickly. Your Grace. Thank you for your warning. We appreciate your efforts to chart the course you would naturally have followed had you become Archbishop. At least, Your Grace, I could never have been accused of divided loyalties. Should I go now? Can I go? No. See who's outside. Uh, this is Brother Philip, Your Grace. He's come with a message for the Bishop of London. I told him he just left, but now he insists on seeing you. Your Grace, I wouldn't have dreamed of disturbing you, but... Yes, you are disturbed, Brother Philip. What is it? I believe my Lord Bishop of London came to you to demand the custody of the accused priest. Yeah. The priest is dead. Dead? Yes. He tried to escape, but Lord Gilbert's soldiers caught him and in the presence of his lordship, killed him. Thank you, Brother Philip. Leave us now, Brother John. My Lord Jesus, I find it difficult to talk to you. What can I say? I, who have turned away from you so often with indifference, I have been a stranger to prayer, undeserving of your friendship and your love. I've been without honor and feel unworthy. I am a weak and shallow creature, clever only in the second-rate and worldly art, seeking my comfort and pleasure. I gave my love, such as it was, elsewhere putting service to my earthly king before my duty to you. But now, they have made me the shepherd of your flock and guardian of your church. Please, Lord, teach me now how to serve you with all my heart, to know at last what it really is to love, to adore, so that I may worthily administer your kingdom here upon earth and find my true honor in observing your divine will. Please, Lord, make me worthy. You are a creature of extremes, aren't you, Brother John? Get up. Forgive me. I didn't know. I never realized. 
Nor did I. Get up. You were very good at admonishing an archbishop. Do you think you could talk to a king? Yes. Good. Then you will memorize what I write. Henry. Henry. What is it, Mother? Why do you keep gazing out of the window? Beckett won't come, you know. He's much too busy giving money to the poor and fitting sandals on beggars. I never liked him as an adventurer, but now that he puts on the airs of a saint, he certainly keeps himself in splendid isolation since you made him archbishop. He's in retreat. It's part of the ritual. Anyway, I don't need to be reassured by his presence. He's my friend. Nor's the pity. He has a strange way of showing gratitude. Your friend? You mean you went to the whorehouses together? It was he who lured you away from the duties you owe to me. Madam, in matters of debauchery, it was I who lured him. And I didn't need anyone to lure me away from the duties I owe you. I made you four children very conscientiously. Thank the Lord, my duty is done. I pray heaven he stays away from you. When you realize how he has used you, you may appreciate the joys of family life again. The joys of family life are limited, madam. To be perfectly frank, you bore me! You and your everlasting backbiting! Stop this! And this eternal tutting of yours! In God's name, how long does it take to make a tapestry? And it's mediocre beyond belief! One performs according to one's gifts. Yes. One of you. Henry the Third. Not yet, sir! Number two is in the best of height! A fine way you bring up your children, madam. Do you see yourself as regent already? No wonder I shun your bed. It's not amusing to make love with one's own widow. Who's that? A messenger. From Canterbury. If you can spare the time from bullying your children. Messenger. Is your master ill? No, your highness. I have a message from his grace. Message? These are Beckett's words. Whereas men at arms of the Lord Gilbert, under his orders and in his presence, have seized and killed a priest of the church, I, Beckett, Archbishop of Canterbury, Primate of England, do now ask that your highness, in accordance with the Lord of the realm, apprehend Lord Gilbert and charge him with a crime of murder. Well, my son, now you have heard from your friend. Get out! Get out! Both of you! Take your royal vermin with you! Highness, is there a reply for the Archbishop? Your Grace. Yeah? The King is here. Are you certain? He came mounted and alone, but I'm sure it's he. Why did you send a messenger? Canterbury's only five hours from London. I've just written it in four. I'm frozen stiff. 
Would you like some wine? No. Give me a reason. Why did you send a messenger? What answer did you give him? You've arrived here before he has. Uh, I detect the old devious Beckett here. What game are you playing, Thomas? No game, my prince. Lord Gilbert murdered a priest. I want the guilty punished. The guilty of what? This priest was a scandal to his parish. That was never proved. Gilbert should have handed the accused over to the church for process of law. If guilty, we would have determined his punishment. I am the law! Gilbert had recourse to me. I gave him leave to arrest this priest. I cannot allow any of my clergy to be thrown into prison and tried by the civil authorities. Neither can I stand by and let my priests be murdered. You? You can't allow. You can't stand by. Are you taking yourself seriously as Archbishop? I am the Archbishop, my prince. By my grace! Are you demented? You're Chancellor of England. You're mine. I am also the Archbishop. And you have introduced me to deeper obligations. And if I won't charge Gilbert? I can't force you. But there is always a final judgment beyond the King's justice. Oh, that. Lord Gilbert will face his fate on the Day of Judgment, as we all will. I'm sure he'll have a great deal more to answer for than killing a felonious priest. Lord Gilbert will come to that judgment already damned, sire. I intend to excommunicate him. You are demented. Don't you understand that when you attack my nobles, you attack me, and when you attack me, you attack England? There is more to England than the crown. We must learn to face that eventually, my prince. Damn you! Don't lecture me! You once told me you didn't know what honor was, and I laughed at you. But now to betray me, to challenge my power. I do not seek power, my prince. It is only that I finally discovered a real honor to defend. Whose honor? Whose honor is greater than the king's? The honor of God. Forgive me. You give the lions of England back to me. Like a little boy who doesn't want to play anymore. I would have gone to war with all England's might behind me and even against England's interests to defend you, Thomas. I would have given away my life laughing before you. Only I loved you and you didn't love me. That's the difference. Stay away. But thank you for this last gift as you desert me. Now I shall learn to be alone. Bishop, I wish to confess. The king has his own confessor. It is an important court prerogative. 
Don't be nervous, Bishop. I'm not asking for absolution. I have something far worse than a sin on my conscience. A mistake. A crass mistake. I ordered you to vote for Beckett in the election at Canterbury. I repent of it. I bowed beneath the royal hand. Very reluctantly, I know. I'm told this compromise with your conscience made you seriously ill afterwards. God cured me. Very good of him. You wear his uniform and have his ear. He's let me fall ill without lifting a finger. And I must cure myself. I did not know. I have the archbishop on my stomach. A big, hard lump. I shall have to vomit back. I think you are a man one can talk to, Bishop. I believe I misjudged you. Friendship blinded me. Is the king's friendship for Thomas Beckett dead, Your Highness? Yes, Bishop, it died quite suddenly, a sort of heart failure. A curious phenomenon, Your Highness, but quite frequent. I hate Beckett now. I hate him as much as you are jealous of him. He's like an animal tearing my guts. I can't bear it anymore. I shall have to turn it loose on him. But I am the king. And my office stands in my way. I need someone to help me. My only interest is for the church. Oh, come, Bishop. We're alone and the church is empty. The church is never empty. The little red lamp burns in the chapel, signifying God's presence in the tabernacle. <laughs> Do you take me for one of your sheep, holy pastor? I like playing games, but only with boys of my own age. The one for whom that little red lamp burns has seen into your innermost heart and mine a long time ago. Of my hatred of Thomas Beckett and your envy of him. He knows all there is to know. Strange. I'd always taken your highness for a perennial adolescent who cared only for his pleasures. One can be wrong about people, Bishop. I made the same mistake. Now, if it could be proved that Beckett had committed some gross impropriety as Chancellor, say, embezzlement. What would the church do? If that were established, I say if, the bishops could legally dissolve their allegiance to him pending their report to the Pope. And beyond that? You, you would go beyond that. The whole way? In his guilt, if he were found guilty, he would then be charged under canon law. And the penalty? That would be for your majesty to decide. Thomas, you love him, don't you? You still love him, that imposter, that Saxon gutter snipe, that mighted hog. Hold your tongue, priest. All I confided to you was my hate, not my love. For England's sake, you'll help me get rid of him. But don't ever insult him to my face. He will be accused. And you will play your proper part. According to law, I would spit if I were not in God's house. My brothers, as you have been told, your presence here is voluntary. If any of you have second thoughts, you may retire now. Thank you for attending us. my lords. I did not expect to see you at Canterbury. Do you still disagree with my decision? Your Grace, can nothing persuade you to delay? 
Oh, yes? The King's arrest of Lord Gilbert on the charge of sacrilegious murder. There will be an arrest, but not Lord Gilbert's. The Sheriff of London is waiting in the sacristy. He has orders to summon you before the King's Grand Justicer the instant you pronounce the excommunication. I'm curious. On what charge? Embezzlement. The King finds that there are large sums of money missing from the Treasury during your administration as Chancellor. How much? 40,000 pounds in fine gold. <laughs> there was never that much gold in the whole treasury. I beg of you, do not do this. You will strike a blow that will split church and state for a generation. If I do not strike it now, the church, as we know it, will not survive a generation. God will see that it survives. No. The kingdom of God must be defended like any other kingdom. Gentlemen, it is a supreme irony that the worldly Beckett, the profligate and libertine, should find himself standing here at this moment. But here he is, in spite of himself. But the king, for good or ill, chose to pass the burden of the church onto me, and now I must carry it. I've rolled up my sleeves and taken the church on my back. Nothing will ever make me set it down again. Now, Lord, if you will forgive me. Lord Gilbert, Baron of England by the grace of His Majesty King Henry II, seized upon the person of a priest of the Holy Church and unlawfully did hold him in custody. Furthermore, in the presence of Lord Gilbert and by his command, his men seized upon this priest when he tried to escape and put him to death. This is the sin of murder and sacrilege. In that, Lord Gilbert has rendered no act of contrition or repentance and is at the moment at liberty in the land. We do here and now separate him from the precious body and blood of Christ and from the society of all Christians. We exclude him from our Holy Mother Church and all her sacraments in heaven or on earth. We declare him excommunicate and anathema. We cast him into the outer darkness. We judge him damned with the devil and his fallen angels and all the reprobate to eternal fire and everlasting pain.
As the Lord Sheriff of London, I am commanded to summon you, Thomas Beckett, to the King's Court on the charges herein set forth and stamped with the King's seal. He's doomed, isn't he? Yes. At last. I forbid you to gloat. At seeing your enemy perish, why not? Beckett is my enemy. But in the human balance, traitor that he is, and naked as his mother made him, he's worth a hundred of you, madam. With your crown and your jewels and your august uncle, the emperor, into the bargain. I'm forced to fight him now and crush him. But at least he gave me, with open hands, everything that is at all good in me. And you have never given me anything but your carping mediocrity and your everlasting obsession with your puny little person and what you thought was due to it. That's why I forbid you to smile while Beckett is being destroyed. I gave you my youth, gave you your children. I don't like my children. And as for your youth, that withered flower pressed between the pages of a hymn book since you were 12 years old with its watery blood and stale, insipid scent. You can bid farewell to that without a tear. Your body was an empty desert, madam, which duty forced me to wander in alone. But you have never been a wife to me. And Beckett was my friend, red-blooded, generous, and full of strength. Oh, my Thomas. And I. I have given you nothing, I suppose. Life. Yes. Thank you. But after that, I never saw you except in a passageway on your way to a ball or in your crown and ermine mantle ten minutes before official ceremonies when you were forced to tolerate my presence. No! No one on this earth has ever loved me except Beckett. Call him back then. Absolve him if he loves you. Give him back his power, but do something. I am. I'm learning to be alone. By the authority granted me, I, Robert de Beaumont, servant of the Crown, do now before this council charge Thomas Beckett with the crimes of... Robert. I charge you, Thomas Beckett. Robert de Beaumont, hear me for the sake of your soul, which is in the gravest danger. All in this assembly know how faithfully I have served my lord, the king. It was he who willed that I be archbishop and it was for love of him alone that I accepted. I am innocent of any wrongdoing in my administration of the king's treasury as chancellor or at any other time. I therefore refuse to plead to these trumped-up charges. I will be judged by the Pope alone, to whom before you all I now appeal and place myself and my church under his protection. As head of the Church of England and as your spiritual father, I forbid you to pass judgment on me. I command you and all who would charge me to hold your peace 
on pain of endangering your immortal souls. Well played, Thomas. Do you think you can carry this off indefinitely, you fool? We are all God's fools, my lord. Beckett! You are a liar! You are a traitor! Keep your sword, Morville, before you impale your soul upon it. Made of them. I'm surrounded by fools! Beckett is the only intelligent man in my kingdom, and he's against me! <laughs> your Highness, it was impossible. Shut to... up! Get to your feet. Did you hear him? He appeals to the Pope. If he gains the Pope's ear, Bishop, we may find the entire kingdom under papal interdict. I could be excommunicated myself. But, Your Highness, I do not think that... I want no more thinking! Beckett must not cross the Channel. King Louis of France would be the first to help him get to the Pope. The Archbishop must not leave England. See to it. From now on, Bishop, it is total war. French knight takes your English bishop. Your Majesty's adroit. Pardon, sir. Too snug. Why do all tailors want to strangle one's armpits? Your Majesty, the English ambassadors extraordinary insist that I convey their compliments. They've already done that. I'll see them when I'm ready. That's my job. They wish respectfully, sir, to call your attention to the fact that they have been waiting for three days. Let them wait. That's their job. Ambassadors are paid to pace about in empty rooms, especially in these times of uneasy peace. They have an urgent communication from Henry of England, sir. The King of England and his ambassadors can drown themselves in what they are impertinent enough to call their English channel. <laughs> but, Your Majesty, the extradition of a criminal is a courtesy due from one crowned head to another. My dear man, crowned heads are free to play the little game of courtesy, but nations owe one another none. Oh. All right, show them in, show them in. Now, you may stay. The ambassadors can share our attention with our tailor. 
It will demonstrate to the English their exact social status at our court. May I be permitted to present to your majesty the two envoys extraordinary from His Highness Henry of England, His Grace the Bishop of London, and Robert de Beaumont, Duke of Leicester. Welcome, my lords. Fresh from England, how is our good King Henry? He was well, your majesty, when we left him two weeks ago. Two weeks to cross the channel? Gentlemen, we have been waiting upon your majesty for three days. Why was I not informed? Giraud. Your, your majesty. You see what I have to contend with. But perhaps I can make it up to you. Would you permit me to furnish you with some French garments made by our craftsmen here? It will only take two weeks. We thank your majesty, but we have urgent business in Rome. Too bad. Well, uh, is there anything else I can do for you? I wish to deliver a message from Henry, King of England, to his friend Louis, King of the French. We are all ears. He wishes you to oh, know... Just one moment. Yes, do continue. He wishes you to know that Thomas Becket, Archbishop of Canterbury, has been found guilty of treason and has forthwith fled his kingdom. He therefore entreats you not to allow this criminal to reside within your territories, nor to permit any of your vassals to give counsel or support to him. He solemnly declares that your enemies would receive none from him, nor from his subjects. Henry, King of England, Duke of Normandy. Gentlemen, we have listened most attentively to your sovereign's gracious request, and we shall shortly be drafting a formal reply to it. In the meantime, however, we can only express our astonishment. No news has reached us of the Archbishop of Canterbury's presence in our domains. But, sire, we have word that he is in your domains. He's taken refuge in the Abbey of Samata. My Lord Bishop, we flatter ourselves there is some order in our kingdom. If he were there, we should most certainly have been informed. Bring in Thomas Beckett. Thomas Beckett and greet us as the primate of England. The bar would have been enough. And if I know my etiquette, you were entitled to a slight nod of the head from me. That's done. I might also be required to kiss the ring if this visit were an official one. But I am under the impression that it isn't. No, sir. I'm only an exile. That too is an important title in France. I'm told you are a dangerous one. I'm afraid so, sir. How delightful. Shall we discuss it in private? We enjoy danger, Beckett. It keeps us alive. Do you value candor? I do, sire. Then let me tell you that were you a French bishop, I might have clapped you into prison myself. For the moment, however, we are pleased to grant you our royal protection. I humbly thank you, Your Majesty, but I'm bound to tell you that I cannot buy your favor with any act hostile to my country. You do us an injustice. That was understood. I believe that in the past, however, you have been no stranger to the art of political maneuver. That is true, sire. Well, speaking frankly, you suit our purpose in our chess game. England is splitting into the Henry camp and the Beckett camp. And that suits us admirably. We ask nothing further of you. But, there is always a but, as I'm sure you are aware. I am aware. I am responsible only for France's interest, Beckett. Unfortunately, I cannot afford to shoulder those of heaven as well. For the moment, it suits me to shelter any fugitive from Henry's court. His recent impertinence in claiming and capturing some of our frontier towns must be well known to you, Thomas, since you more than distinguished yourself in several of these engagements. In a month or so, however, my dealings with Henry may require a different tactic. I might even be obliged to ask you to leave France. I hope to have a solution to such a dilemma. Oh? I intend to go on to Rome put my case before the Holy Father. 
if you will give me safe conduct. You shall have it, of course. You're the ideal guest. But might I be permitted to give you a word of advice? I would appreciate it. The Pope is a most holy man, but like so many lofty personages, he is surrounded by men of a somewhat inferior stamp. They need money. And King Henry might be willing to provide it. Keep your eyes open. I will. But permit me to show you my aviary. That man Beckett smacks of too much sincerity. In practice, it is most disconcerting. Fiddlesticks. Sincerity is a form of strategy just like any other. In a pinch, I have been known to use it myself. The trouble is, if your opponent starts being sincere at the same time you do, then the game becomes horribly confusing. Psst. simple matter. No, 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 Zambelli. I don't agree. It is impossible. If we take the money from King Henry, I cannot possibly receive Beckett. Receive the money from the king, very holy father, and receive the archbishop too. The one will neutralize the other. You know what they say Beckett is going to ask me. No, Holy Father. Zambelli, don't play the fox with me. It was you who told me. I beg your pardon, Holy Father. I had forgotten. Or rather, as your holiness asked me the question, I thought you had forgotten. And so I took a chance and... Uh... Zambelli, if you start out maneuvering yourself to no purpose, we'll be here all night. Well, bring him in. His Holiness will receive you now. Sorry to be importunate, Your Holiness, but time is running out, and my cause concerns the very life of the Church in England. I know, I know, and your cause is worthy. But uh, nevertheless, Beckett, the Church must seek to exist peacefully within the framework of the state. I sought that with desperation, Your Holiness. Precisely, Beckett. You are new to God's service, and perhaps for that reason you were somewhat hot-headed and intemperate in your methods. You have proved your moral worth, but you have also split the church in England into two parties, and that is regrettable. Holy Father, I fear this may be true, and it has given me much agony. If I'm guilty, if my judgment was wrong, then I am most sincerely repentant. Unfortunately, that doesn't solve the problem. Holy Father, relieve me of the title of Archbishop. Let me be an ordinary priest. All right, done. Zambelli. Why do you request this? Then Your Holiness could make a free and open decision. The protection of my position as head of the English Church may prove an embarrassment. I would like to relieve you of it. No. That would mean our total surrender to the state. You will maintain your status as Archbishop, 
but you will, for the present, maintain it in a monastic retreat. Where do you wish us to send you? To the Abbey of Saint-Martin in France. I ask only that my former servant, Brother John, be allowed to accompany me. Of course. God grant you peace, Thomas Beckett. Man is obviously an abyss of ambition. How long a retreat? A very long retreat. I wouldn't count on it. Wait till he tastes the food at the monastery. Concerned, Your Grace. Is something wrong? No, Brother John. You are unhappy here. No, perhaps I'm too happy. Can I help? No. Only God can help. in simplicity of spirit? Is it the path to bring me nearer to you? Or is it too easy a way, perhaps even a luxury? The path to holiness in this monastery is too effortless. I think it would be too easy to buy you like this. It has pleased you to make me Archbishop and to set me like a solitary pawn face to face with the king on the chessboard. I think you mean me to defend your honor peacefully if I can with argument and with compromise. And if I cannot, then with the full challenge of my office and the soaring force of what I know to be right. So, I shall take up the mitre again, and the golden cope, and the great silver cross. And I shall go back and fight with the weapons it has pleased you to give me. For the rest, thy will be done. Look, Thomas, your king awaits you. I'm glad you weren't born on this side of the channel, Thomas. You'd have been a thorn in my side, too. How did you bewitch me into doing this for you? I convinced you that if the king and I are reconciled, he will be placed in your debt. True. Why does he hate you, sir? He's never forgiven me for preferring God to him. Go, Thomas.
You know, it's a strange thing, but Beckett's safety has become quite dear to me. So do you, my prince. You cold? I'm frozen stiff. Chill blains are killing me. You love it, of course. You're in your element, aren't you? Just that monk's habit. I always told you one must fight the cold with the cold's weapons. Strip yourself naked every morning and splash, splash yourself, yourself with, with cold, cold water. water. I used to, when you were there to make me. I never wash now, I stink. How's your son? He must have come of age. He's an idiot and sly like his mother. Thomas, don't you ever marry. You took that matter out of my hands when you had me ordained. If we start on that, we're sure to quarrel. Talk about something else. Very well. Has your majesty done much hunting lately? Yes, every day. It doesn't amuse me anymore. Beckett, I'm bored. My prince, I wish I could help you. What are you waiting for? For the honor of God and the honor of the king to become one. That may take long. Yes. That may take long. I'm the king, Thomas. And so long as we are on this earth, you owe me the first move. I'm prepared to forget a lot of things, but not the fact that I am king. You yourself taught me that. Never forget it, my prince. You have a different task to do. You have to steer the ship. And you, what do you have to do? To resist you with all my might when you steer against the Lord God. What do you expect of me, then? Are you hoping I'll weaken? No. I'm afraid we must only do absurdly what it has been given to us to do, right to the end. Look, suppose we come down to earth and use words that make sense to a boor like myself. Otherwise, we'll never get anywhere. And there'll be two frozen statues trying to make their peace in a frozen eternity. My lord, I was doing my best to make you understand. I'm an idiot, then. Talk to me like an idiot. Will you lift the excommunication you pronounced on Lord Gilbert? No because it's the only weapon I have left to defend what was given into my care. Will you agree to the ten proposals which the bishops accepted in your absence, particularly to the surrender of priests who seek the protection of the church to escape my courts of justice? No. My role is to defend my sheep, and they are my sheep. But I shall agree to the nine other articles in a spirit of peace, and because I know you must remain king in all and of all. Save the honor of God. All right. I will give way on this one point. In memory of our past friendship. You may return to England. Thank you, my prince. I meant to go back in any case and give myself up to your power. But in all things that concern this earth, I owe you obedience. We've finished now. And I'm cold. I feel cold too. Now. You never loved me, did you, Thomas? In so far as I was capable of love, Yes, I did. Did you start to love God? You mule! Answer a simple question! Yes. I started to love the honor of God. I should never have seen you. It hurts too much. 
My prince. No! No pity. He's dirty. This is the last time I shall come begging to you. Go back to England. Farewell, my prince. I sail tomorrow. I know that I shall never see you again. How dare you say that to me when I've given you my royal word? Do you take me for a traitor? Sit here. You look to me, sir, not your mother. Sit, you witless baboon. What is the meaning of this? Henry, what are you doing? I know very well what I'm doing, madam. Out. Before you fill your bellies, we have something to announce. Reviving an ancient custom, we have decided to have our successor crowned in our lifetime. We do this to protect the kingdom from future pretenders to the throne. Henry, this... Shut up. Start dribbling while I raise you to glory. To my successor, Henry III. Henry III! When will the coronation take place? As soon as we arrive in England. Where, may I ask? You may well ask. At York. Not at Canterbury? My good mother, gentlemen, is hinting with her customary delicacy that there is a double purpose to this mummery. There is. We are going to show our freshly reinstated archbishop that we can still do without him. The coronation of the English king is the most jealously guarded privilege of Canterbury. <laughs> I'd give anything to see Beckett's face when he learns he's lost it. And that York has got him. <laughs> ah, that will fix him. <laughs> Get out of there, you young cretin. You're not crowned yet. What a look. Filial devotion is a beautiful thing. You'd like to be the real king, wouldn't you, you little pig? Well, that number three after your name, and Papa good and stiff in his tomb. Well, you'll have to wait a bit. Papa is well. Papa is very well indeed. My son, do you know I've always been against any reconciliation with that wretch Beckett? You know I understand your hatred for him. But do not let it lead you into an action which you may bitterly regret. This boy is not clever. Ambitious men will use him against you long before you cease to reign. I'm still very much alive, madam. And in control. Henry, for all our sakes, think of England and do not of your disappointed love for this man. Love? Love? A moment ago it was hate. And what gives you the right, madam, to meddle in my loves and hates? You have an obsession about him which is unhealthy and unnatural. And now that he no longer gives you comfort, God, if Thomas Beckett were a faithless woman, you'd behave no differently. Sweet Jesus, you'd tear him out of your heart. Oh, if I were a man. Thank God, madam, he gave you breasts. An asset from which I derive not the slightest benefit. 
I was let out to be suckled by a peasant girl. That, no doubt, is why it is so difficult to see the king beneath your crown. <laughs> so you have something to add, my lady. Well, go on. Add it. Add it. Get it out of you. Once and for all, in one great wine. Let's hear the poison you've accumulated. I pity you. I tolerated your mistresses, sir. But do you expect me to tolerate everything? Beck it! Always beck it! I am a woman. I am your wife. I am a queen. I'll complain to my father. I'll complain to my uncle, the emperor. I'll complain to all the kings of Europe. I'll complain to God. <laughs> if I were you, madam, I'd start with God. Go to your chapel and see if he's at home. Get out the pen of you. I wretch with boredom at the sight of you. To the devil and my whole family, if you have you. And as for you, young Henry III, here's my royal foot up your royal buttocks. <laughs> oh, that's better. Let us drink, gentlemen. Let us drink till we roll under the table in vomit and oblivion. <laughs> <laughs> My faithful hounds, it's warm beside you, like beasts in a stable. Good sweat. Comfortable nothingness. Not the least glimmer inside to spoil the fun. And to think, before I met Beckett, I was like you. A well-oiled machine, a belching, whoring, and punching head. <laughs> What did you put in mind, Thomas? Yeah. To stop the machine. Tell me, do you ever think? Never, sir. A gentleman has better things to do. <laughs> yeah, and drink up. What's the news from England? Has Beckett landed? He has landed, sir. There's no one there to receive him. Lord Gilbert, for example. Oh, he was there. Damned and excommunicate as he still is. But there were seven bishops there, charging his soldiers not to cause bloodshed and give the lie to the safe conduct you gave Beckett. Yes. I gave him safe conduct. The peasants escorted him from village to village. They cheered him all the way to Canterbury. Not a single gentleman, not a single Norman showed his face. Only Saxons? Mm. Yeah. Swarms on them. Beckett left England a fugitive, an exile. He's returned there to find an affection the people have always saved for their king. A man who ate my bread. A man I raised from nothing. A man I loved. Yes. I loved him. I loved him. And I still do. Enough. Oh, God. Enough. <laughs> as useless as a woman. So long as he's alive, I tremble. I shake. <laughs> I'm the king. <laughs> and yet I shake.
Will no one rid me of this meddlesome priest? A priest who mocks me. Are all around me cowards like myself? Are there no men left in England? I, I, it's my It's too fast. Too fast. It's too It's difficult with all these little laces. What's a woman's hands? A man's hands are better today. It's worth doing. It's worth doing well. Yes. If it's worth doing, it's worth doing well. Do up all the laces, every one of them. I must look my best today. God will give us time. There, yeah, that's done. But I just as soon have cleaned out our pigsty at home. It's not half so much hard work. Were you fond of your pig? Yes, I was. In my father's house, we had some pigs too when I was a child. Did you now? Will it be today? It's possible, my son. You afraid? Oh, no. Not if I have time to fight. All I want is the chance to strike a few blows first. So I shan't have done nothing but receive them all my life. If I can kill one Norman first, just one, that'll seem fair and right enough to me. Are you so set on killing one? Yes, I am. I don't mind if I am just a grain of sand in a machine, because I know by putting more and more grains of sand in a machine, one day it'll come grinding to a stop. And on that day, what then? Well, we'll have a fine, new, well-oiled machine in place of the old one. And this time, we'll put the Normans into it instead. That's what justice means, doesn't it? Give me my silver cross. I must hold it. Lord, it's heavy. A good swipe with this and they'd feel it. Lucky little Saxon. For you, that would settle all accounts in this black world, wouldn't it? Your 
Grace, there are armed men at the doors. I bolted the doors, but... It's time for Vespers. Does one bolt the doors during Vespers? I've never heard of it. But, Your Grace... Open them. Everything must be as it should be for divine service. Jutorium meum intende. It is here now, the supreme folly. This is its hour. does not carry arms into God's house. What do you want? Your death. We will continue with the service. Saxon. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, yes, it was all agreed. I forgive you, pigs. Saxon pigs. They certainly wanted their money's worth. Is there a large crowd outside? Yes, sir. 
There's nothing more certain to win them over than the sight of a king doing penance and humbling himself under the lash. The honor of God, gentlemen, is a very good thing. And all things considered, one gains by having it on one's side. Thomas Beckett, our friend, always used to say so. Tonight in council, we will determine what punishment his murderers should receive. Sire, they are unknown. Our justice will seek them out, you may be sure. It is a time, my dear barons, for all of us to do penance. citizens of England. As I have submitted myself to the lash, so have I petitioned the Pope. And this day I have received his answer. Thomas Beckett, former Archbishop of Canterbury and martyr to the cause of God and his church, shall henceforth be honoured and prayed to in this kingdom as a saint. Enough. Are you satisfied now, Thomas? 